All right, everyone, this is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Um, we have a planned podcast uh, with two of my friends. We'll be doing a more formal one a couple of uh, a, a week or so from now, but I want to invite them. It's uh, Ken and Joe up in New Hampshire. Uh, they're with the Government Integrity Project. But what I want to talk about today is, um, as many of you know, there's a big, um, uh, 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 an important set of stuff that's going on the internet, which I've been involved in, which is about this debate that, um, Joe Rogan is uh, engineering um, with Robert Kennedy, who frankly um, is extremely afraid of me and he runs away from me. And we'll talk about that with Joe and Ken. We'll also talk about the fact that Joe Rogan is a grifter maximus. He delays truth. He's really not interested in anything having to do with truth, freedom, and her, her health. And I'll also talk about that with my experience um, uh, with the work that we did on GMOs back in 2013 and 2014, how he actively promoted a guy who's all about GMOs, uh, never wanted to have a real scientist like myself on. And then with the vaccine issue, I mean, I'm the guy who has a PhD from MIT, who has uh, actually done research on the immune system, has published in Nature, was invited to the National Science Foundation to give the talk on the modern immune system. So he goes and finds two buffoons, one of the buffoons being the charlatan, Kennedy, and we'll talk about him, and this other guy, Peter Hotez. Neither of them are qualified to talk about the immune system, but in classic form, these guys are all about WWE wrestling because they treat their audience like dummies. Uh, Joe Rogan is a dummy, and I say that with all due respect for his audience who's being bamboozled by this guy who knows no science and his entire career has been a grifter watching which way the wind blows, and it's all about maximizing his revenue on Spotify. And we'll talk about that. But we're in a very, very important time because um, people are really looking to break from the left and the right. They're really looking for truth. And people like Rogan, people like Kennedy, people like Elon Musk, people like I like to call him Fucker Carlson or Tucker Carlson and even Trump are all part of the elites. And it's time that people broke from them and had some self-respect for themselves. And that's what our movement for truth, freedom and health is. So when we want to talk about integrity, people really need to really talk about integrity, not fake it. So hopefully we'll have some of that conversation today. So we have uh, Ken and Joe. Ken and Joe are up in- um, Tom, Tom, sorry. Ken and Tom are up in uh, Vermont. Joe Rogan, Tom Murray. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we wanna have this conversation. I know Ken, you and I on the phone, we're gonna do it. We had some, you guys, we were gonna do a podcast with you guys, but we had some technical issues. So we said, yeah. let's use the time um, and we'll reconvene later. But yeah. I don't know where you want me to start, um, Ken and Tom, but I can start in 2020. Um, but I really want to let the audience know what a scumbag Joe Rogan is, what a duplicitous, hypocritical person of contradictions Robert F. Kennedy is. Um, we can talk about Trump, but I know a lot of us, we, we all supported Trump, right, in 2020. Um, but you have a lot of people who get caught in this, uh, what I call the not so obvious establishment, and they lose self-respect for themselves as working people. And it's time that working people realize that anyone who comes from what I call the swarm, or who you know charge it? Who lives out in Malibu, Malibu and Mar Lago, and are part of the establishment, thinking that they're going to save us is one of the most ludicrous, uh, irrational ways of thinking. And yeah, so, I think that's why you get you're so passionate about it, as Ken and I are as well. You know, um, we formed the Government Integrity Project, and and our course of action is more or less holding our our elected and appointed officials to account. Um, we wanted to have you on because. We too understand, you know, you talk about the swarm, you talk about the not so obvious establishment, the obvious establishment, all the different players that are out there. And I don't think the pieces are necessarily put together in a very easy way for the general public to understand. And we want to just take this opportunity to kind of expand on that message into the general public and let them know almost as a public service announcement, this is what's going on. Because I think it's so important. You saw it really come to a head over the weekend. You had um, Joe Rogan's podcast where he had JFK Jr. on that long format three hour form podcast. And then quite a bit of, um, you know, uh, Twitter um, messaging going back and forth. I think it, I think it's up to one point five million to uh, for Peter Hotez to come on the show and debate with our RFK. But I think the what people want to see is they wanted to see people like yourself come on in debate and uh, or not even necessarily 
we just have a conversation. I think uh, Robert Malone's theme was up there too. And um, I think that's what everyone's clamoring for. They just want to have a conversation where a lot of the stuff is over um, the average person's head, where you have such a unique perspective, having the degrees and the, um, and the credentials that you have and other people have. Let's just listen to a conversation between these people and see where it goes. Yeah. Well, one, of the, one of the things, Tom, is that let's just sort of level set everything so people really understand it. People, uh, many of the people are following me since 2019, 2020 on this particular issue, and there's others who followed me longer than that, know very, very specifically that the people who, have, who, are, who are very honest about this know that it was in 2019, if we go long before the pandemic hit, I was invited to the National Science Foundation um, to give a very, very, you know, the National Science Foundation chooses who they want to come speak. It's a very distinguished process. So I was invited to give the distinguished lecture on the modern science of the immune system. That was in November of 2019. And in that lecture to a room full of about 200 engineers and scientists, I laid it out very clearly um, that we need to go beyond vax and anti-vax argument, that this is really a ruse, that the real issue is the immune system. And in that discourse, Ken and Tom, I went back and I reviewed the history of the 1962 Kennedy. It was John Kennedy, and everyone should write this down because a lot of people get confused, but it was John Kennedy in 1962 who signed the National uh, the Vaccination Act. So just remember that, 1962. Why is that date important? Because the next year was when the measles vaccine came in 1963. Well, by 1963, nearly 99% of measles had already been eradicated. Why? because of hygiene, because of the infrastructure that was put in. And all of that infrastructure and hygiene didn't just emerge because the elites wanted to help working people like us, Tom, and make our children healthier. It emerged because during the 40 years preceding that, there were massive protests on the streets, working people. A hundred million people were on the streets fighting in real organic movements, independent of the Democrats and Republicans. And American history wants to wipe that away. And these movements demanded the ending of child labor. They demanded, demanded infrastructure. They, they demanded health care. And the elites were so scared in the 30s by this revolutionary movement of the American working people that they were forced to give these concessions. So this needs to be understood because in the decade prior to that, in the 1880s, there was four American workers who were hanged in Haymarket for fighting for the eight-hour workday. So all of this history of the American working class leading the global movement for basic rights has been wiped out of American history by the Democrats and the Republicans. And it was during that period that we got infrastructure. You know, people came back from World War II, real men who had fought for this country and they demanded all this infrastructure. And these workers' movements by 1950 were branded by the right-wing Republicans as communist socialist movements by Joseph McCarthy and the Repu and the Democrats took over these unions. So, but, but if you look at the reality between 1900s to 1970, as the American pie grew, it was the biggest growth of the American GDP, all of the working people's wages, like our wages grew, Tom, you know? And, and that was the biggest growth in history. But by 1970, the left and the right destroyed the unions, I mean, took over them. The Kennedys were all part of the destruction of the unions. And the right wing said, if you ever said workers unite, you must be a communist. You see, they destroyed the organic American working class movement. And between 1970 to today, two American pies got created. The GDP increased, but $47 trillion got um, transferred from the super wealthy uh, I mean, from the from working people to the to the super wealthy. So although GDP grew, there was no uh, uh, wage growth among the uh, for, first or two income quartiles. This needs to be understood. So, and in fact, um, during that same period between 1970 to today, the Democrats and the Republicans ensured that there was no no more bottoms up workers movements. In fact, there were at most two million people who struck during the last 60 de 60 years in maybe 900 strikes. So we have to understand this context that the elites 
do not want people to mobilize independently following guys like me and you and working people. They want people to be taken advantage of and push a Kennedy, you know, as though the Kennedys, you know, a reckless mafia family who frankly uh, are the foundations of destroying this country. And the, but they've been made to be Camelot. They've been promoted with massive PR. And then what's fundamentally occurred is because by 19... 62, science was being subsumed. And Eisenhower talked about this, right, in his speech when he left uh, the White House. He said that the military industrial complex was taking over. And Kennedy was aware of this, but it's not like he changed anything. He supported all of this. So it's 1962. It's a very important period because the National Vaccination Act was passed based on a very rudimentary understanding of the immune system that went back to, guess when, Ken and Tom, 1915. They had this two, literally, uh, box model of the immune system. And that two box model basically said, your immune system is composed of two, two systems. The innate immune system, which is that aspect of your immune system, which is exposed to the physical environment. You know, the stuff in your eyes, your nose, the back of your throat, that's called the innate immune system. And it's got various cells, um, that, when, you know, if someone sneezes on you, these first front line comes and tries to protect you, okay? And within about, you know, a uh, couple of days later, your adaptive immune system kicks in and it creates specific things called antibodies. But that was pretty much it. Does that make sense? They only had this very yeah. rudimentary understanding. So when the notion was, oh, we're going to jab something into the adaptive immune system so it'll upregulate antibodies and voila, we've protected you. So that was a base of the 1962 Vaccination Act. They didn't understand, as I shared in my lecture at the NSF, there are many other subsystems. There's the gut microbiome, the virome. There's a gut-brain axis. There's, it's much more complicated, but that was this two-model understanding. So you started jabbing people based on a very rudimentary understanding and that everyone was given the same jab one size fits all. Well, by 1986, people were filing lawsuits in federal court because their kids were being injured. And instead of ripping off the Band-Aid and recognizing that science had discovered a lot more stuff, the other Kennedy, this is a family business for the Kennedys, Ted Kennedy sponsored a bill with Waxman on the Senate side and this was called the National Vaccine Injury Program. It was a rider that was stuck into a big budget bill that they forced Reagan to sign. And, and so instead of eliminating, so we have to understand the 1962 Vaccination Act created this entire government bureaucracy. And it basically said the government has rights to control your body. So let's just think about that. That's what the Democrats created. They basically gave the right of government to come into your body. And as people were being injured, instead of eliminating that government intervention, what did the Kennedys do again with other House of Representative people? They passed the National Vaccine Injury Program. Ken and Tom, well, what did that do? That basically said, we're going to add a whole nother level of bureaucracy called the uh, Vaccine Injury Courts under the, under the executive branch, created a whole bunch of uh, bureaucracy, and it basically indemnified um, all of the big pharma companies. Again, the Kennedys were involved in this. Yeah, you put together a video that talks about the swarm. I and did. You, and you out, you brilliantly, you outline all the different parties, how the few control the many, and you're just touching upon it now. I think if people who are watching this actually do a Google search and watch that, they'll have a really good in-depth understanding of the points you're trying to make and how people are being influenced to look in the wrong direction for where the solutions are to the current day problems. Yeah, and I think in that video, you know, I did an hour video and then we condensed it and then we actually made a one minute one. Uh, it's sort of an information pyramid, but one of the things to understand in that, Ken, I'm glad you brought that up. In that swarm video, the problem with the crowd, including the Kennedys and the Rogans, and this is how they get out of this, is they point it somewhere else. They point it at this people or that group. Oh, yeah, they divide us too. They divide us. But the reality is a swarm is about 10,000 people who are very interconnected. Their kids go to the same equestrian shows. They go to the same golf courses. They, and they're, they're a global, multiracial, 
Uh, decentralized swarm intelligence it includes the top 100 university presidents. It includes, um, you know, the heads of the major investment banks. It's a whole group of people. But the key thing is the front end of that swarm is the obvious establishment, the people like the Clintons and the McConnells, but the not so obvious establishment, which is back ended by these social media influencers like Joe Rogan's, like Tucker Carlson, and we can talk more about him, what a duplicited asshole he really is. These are the people, the left and the right, have the wings of the establishment who sucker people in by saying stuff. So when we go back to this 1962 Vaccination Act, we got to understand that this was a swarm. It was a time when the insurance companies, big pharma, the lobbyists were all sort of starting to congeal. By 1970, they totally congealed. But that swarm, by 1986, had congealed. They fund everything in order to protect big pharma. Again, Ted Kennedy was involved in it. Again, it is amazing, I find, Ken and Tom, you only hear about this in third world countries. Here's a guy, he killed a woman. We all know this, Chappaquiddick. His father brought in like 20 PR people. They absolved him and he still gets to be senator and we hold him in high esteem. But it was Ted Kennedy who passed, who was instrumental on the Senate side in getting the National Vaccine Injury Program through, which protected big pharma. Kennedy won, JFK, a reckless individual who was made into some great martyr through all this Camelot nonsense. And then the brother who killed a woman, raped and killed women, Kennedy's can get away with that. You and I can't. And he's a guy who passed the National Vaccine Injury Program, was instrumental in that. And that is what protected in 1986 all of Big Pharma. So instead of getting rid of this bureaucracy, the swarm created more of the swarm. Now, so from 1986, you, you have people, if their kids got injured, they, they could get maximum liability of 250000 And you had to go to this thing called a vaccine injury program, the courts. So you're under health and human services. So you, you protected big pharma. Then comes this next Kennedy fool called Robert Kennedy. And he's a fool. And I want to use these very, very, unfortunately, ugly terms to describe him. I call him a scumbag. I call him a POS. The reason I do that is the swarm has manipulated a lot of people, brainwashed them to look to these assholes for their salvation. And this is the uh, unfortunate brainwashing that takes place when people watch social media uh, influences like Joe Rogan or they look to Hollywood for their salvation. These people are highly connected. They're all part of one swarm. You can point to certain individuals like Ari Emanuel, who runs all of the largest Hollywood agencies. He runs UFC, owns WWE Entertainment. He's the agent to Trump. So well, there are a few people who have. Yeah. So if, if people should look up a guy called Ari Emanuel. He is uh, William Morris Agency, if anyone has been in the Hollywood, when I lived out there, is the premier agency. If you want to be an actor and actress at some A-list level, you need William Morris or you're nobody. They can make you or break you. Well, Ari Emanuel is a CEO of that. They changed their name to Endeavor. They were the agents for Trump. They're the agents for Obama. They're the agents of every major Hollywood star. Well, they also own UFC. You get the picture? Political theater, Hollywood theater boxing theater and then they recently bought for 6.2 billion uh from vince mcmahon actual wwe so these guys entire mentalities theater that is where joe rogan comes from the guy used to be eating maggots and stuff remember that he used to do these crazy shows so this is the the level of consciousness and they know how to manipulate people so now you have this fool robert kennedy who was a heroin addict spit in cops' place, arrested multiple times, major drug addict. I'm sorry, he didn't get vaccine injured in his throat. That is what happens when you do a ton of heroin. This guy's not a good human being. Look at his entire family history. His wife mysteriously hangs herself. I mean, I don't know a lot of people where their wives hang themselves. And you can read the Daily Mail article. She said, you know, he really actually wants to kill me. He wants me dead. So people forget all of this. Why? Because her name is Kennedy? How is this brainwashing taking place? So Kennedy gets involved in this movement backed by a guy called Mark Blacksell, and you should look him up, a big pharma guy, knows nothing about this, essentially reads talking points, and overnight is branded as a medical freedom fighter. But let's actually look at Kennedy's history. Because when I got into this as a scientist, Ken and Tom, and to just let every, everyone know, and you know, uh, rarely do scientists like myself 
get on like this and curse and can talk like a New Jersey person, right? That doesn't happen, right? People like me are supposed to wear glasses and be in nerds and shut, and particularly if you're an Indian, you're taught to you. I'm supposed to shake my head left to right and really not talk too much, right? And, uh, but unfortunately, I grew up in a background like all of us did, Ken and Tom, from working class neighborhoods, be it from India or New Jersey. And I have great hatred for people like Kennedy because they are actual scumbags who take advantage of people. So here's Robert Kennedy. When I got into this in 2019, I had been invited to give this lecture and I started sharing the science of the immune system, that the immune system is not these two boxes. It's much more complicated. And my PhD was in this field. You know, only 50% of the people make it through the MIT PhD program and only a fraction of people around the world get accepted. It's not an easy PhD to get. So, so I have a PhD in the field of systems biology. My thesis is on the immune system. And I've written in the leading journals in the world. So I, I think I'm pretty qualified. That's why the National Science Foundation honored me with the prestige lecture to talk about the immune system. So when I got into this medical freedom movement, I noticed that you had the pro-vax people and you had the anti-vax people. And the anti-vax organization led by Children's Health Defense Fund, as I got into it, was this backroom organization basically taking advantage of these vaccine injured mothers, very wealthy mothers, who many of them felt guilty that they vaxxed their first child and were getting over some injuries. And Kennedy and, and his clan would basically take advantage of them. And so when I got into this, a lot of those women, Ken and Tom, said, oh my God, we got an MIT scientist who's helping us. Because I did video after video after, people can go see it, educating people on the immune system. So when the pandemic hit in January, I was doing many, many protests leading them about in general saying, we need to go beyond vax and anti-vax because the real heart is the immune system and you need to boost immunity. And what we're doing is taking kids, we don't let them play out in the playgrounds, they don't get dirt, we're ruining their immune systems, driving them to get what I call artificial immunity, Ken and Tom, which is a vaccine. So they had created this much more fundamental supply chain issue. And when I saw Kennedy, I noticed wherever this guy went, he kept losing. He was just collecting money for lawsuit, lawsuits, give me money, give me money, give me money. When the guy's got a billion dollar trust fund. And when I, so I was invited, in fact, we organized one of the biggest protests in January 6th and late uh, 2019 in New Jersey. This was before the pandemic hit and 5,000 mothers showed up and they were very excited to have me speak. We took our speakers from here, Ken and Tom, drove down five hours and 5,000 people were there. And, and we said, we need to organize a militant bottoms up protest because they were trying to pass a bill to push vaccine mandates in Trenton. And because of that protest, we scared the shit out of the legislators, they tabled the bill. Kennedy comes in with his five SUVs and everyone is supposed to do an honorary walk around the entire Capitol to honor those children who had died. Everyone was supposed to, Kennedy just does this little walk as though he's some prima donna. And I was exposing Kennedy because I realized this guy was a backroom operator telling people to negotiate with the Democrats and saying I was, you know, basically ruining their parade. But it was the movement I led that stopped that bill. And that's when I started realizing Kennedy has essentially been milking these poor mothers, making money off them. So I started looking into Kennedy's history. And what did I find? He had endorsed Hillary Clinton not once, not twice, not three times. Now, this is no small joke. 2016 which was at that point, just three years ago, it endorsed Hillary Clinton. Now, why is this important, Ken and Tom? Hillary Clinton is the queen of vaccine mandates. The whole family is, Clinton Global Initiative. In 2015, she had brought in one of the chief people at Monsanto to run her campaign. Now, what is Monsanto? Well, Monsanto is the one that's put glyphosate, which is one of the most horrible poisons, enslaved most of the farmers, created factory farming, and did GMOs. And Hillary Clinton was massively for that. I had written five scientific papers, 2014 to 2015, exposing GMOs. So here's Kennedy, who runs Water Keepers. And I got to let you know that I used to be uh, married to a woman called Fran Drescher. And Fran had me come out to Aspen, where Kennedy runs his big shindig, where he gets 20, 50 grand from Hollywood people to give him money. And then all they do is go skiing and bang each other all there. That's what it is. And that's his Water Keepers nonsense. But here he's running water keepers and here he'd endorse the she devil herself, Hillary Clinton, not once, not twice, but three times. 
openly. Now, you see this contradiction? Now, when you present this, well, he did it in 2016. So all of these brainwashed people try to absolve him, but he endorsed Hillary Clinton three times. Now, Ken and Tom, you know, when I ran for office here in 2020, who was a Democrat opposition on the primary side? It was Joe Kennedy. Joe Kennedy was for massive vaccine mandates. Te uh, Robert Kennedy flew in here and flew him out to Hollywood and did a fundraiser for his nephew, who was pro-vaccine mandates. I really want people to write this down because if you are accepting these contradictions, something is wrong with you. And here is me, a fighter, bottoms up, Ken and Tom, an MIT PhD who risks all of that career stuff by exposing big pharma. You say? Yeah, not know. only that, when you ran for U.S. Senate, you also exposed the backdoor portal to Twitter. I exposed something, something that, that people had suspicions about, but you went out and you proved that there was collusion between the government and the high tech industry. Yeah, we proved it in federal court. And I did it on my own nickel and represented myself. And I didn't see Kennedy out there wanting to help us. He's got it. He raises a ton of money off people. So yeah, one, of but, the, one of the most remarkable things that I saw during that was Judge Wolf, I believe, made a, an appointment of a constitutional attorney. I don't think people understand the rarity of that situation where a judge would actually make that recommendation. Yeah, we had just a, so what ha was happening at that time, many things, there was multiple streams happening, Ken and Tom, right? Here, I was fighting the vaccine fight. The first one exposed Fauci. By the way, March of 2020, people can go look at my Twitter stream. I exposed Fauci, ran the Fire Fauci campaign, collected 100,000 signatures. We drove our bus 36 hours down to DC, handed these petitions to Fire Fauci. Kennedy was nowhere to be found. Elon Musk was nowhere to be found. Robert Malone was nowhere to be found. Tucker Carlson was nowhere to be found. But we did it on our own. And people need to understand. And when I say we, and I take credit for this because what you're looking at is one of you, bottoms up guy, not one of the elites, didn't make a penny doing that. And then Kennedy waited a year and a half to write the Fire Fauci book or whatever, the real Fauci, stealing most of our content, Ken and Tom because he saw it opportune to do that. That's called the scumbag. He, where was Robert Kennedy in March of 2020? You know where he was, Ken and Tom? He was promoting strict lockdowns. Robert Kennedy was promoting strict lockdowns. Lock, step, and barrel with Fauci. Shiva, could you talk, I know we, we're limited here on time, but before we go, could you let our audience know, talk a little bit about Cytosol and the revolutionary technology and the platform that you have and just speak to that for a minute by the way ken and tom we're good on time i don't know what, what you're but i can do that but okay we have Great. quite a bit of audience coming on right now we have close oh, to fantastic. so i don't know if it's fine with you oh, i just fine. sent tom a message but let, let me just finish this and i'll go to cytosol so you have i hope it's clear 1962 the kennedy vaccination is passed 1986 it was Ted Kennedy who protected the big pharma companies. I want to keep bringing up the Kennedys here. And now the Kennedys are supposed to save us. So look at the history of Robert Kennedy. Really look at his history. Endorsed Hillary Clinton not once, not twice, three times. Vaccine mandating queen, pro-GMO, pro-Monsanto, which is pro-Roundup, right? Pro-genetically engineered foods. And the guy says he wants to protect the environment. Roundup corn. Yeah, does this make any sense to you guys? How could you say that I'm a fighter for the env environment and you protect Hillary Clinton? I mean, you actually endorsed her in actual editorial, not like voted for her, not said, hey, vote for her, actually endorsed her. Now, he then he endorsed again his nephew here, who is for harsh vaccine mandates. And in 2020, in March of 2020, where guys like me were running massive protests against these vaccine mandates, against the lockdowns, Telling Trump not to do lockdowns, I did probably 50 videos educating people on vitamin D3, on quercetin and zinc, wrote Trump a letter, gave it all away, didn't make a penny off that why Zelenko stole our protocol and was selling vitamin D3, exactly my protocol. We didn't make a penny. What was Kennedy doing in March of 2020? He was promoting strict lockdowns and justifying it by saying, this is going to protect the earth. We're going to save on climate change, which means he's a climate change scam. Person two. 
So those are just three things. I mean, I could keep going on. Yeah. Well, touch touch on the money. I want you know. I read a great book, um, Creatures of Jekyll Island. Yeah, and you know, talks about the Fed, talks about some of these organizations, and you know, I think you brought up Budweiser specifically, and um, it was due to the you know some of the uh, I'm trying to think of the chemical um, atrazine. Yeah, and by the way, the day after I did that, Kennedy goes on and he says atrazine. That's he literally right. follows. He's a freaking copycat fraud motherfucker yeah he, he must have watched guy. your show and yeah. saw that. well, that's what he does he literally yeah kennedy literally let me tell you and, I, and before i move on to this so when you go back to the this dynamic tom you guys are have, have an engineering background i know ken you do software engineering tom you build stuff we're engineers right we make stuff civil engineer yep civil engineer so to those who are not engineers understand this is being engineered so they know that the two ways you control people are what I call the obvious establishment. You just put a gun to their head and say, if you don't do this, we're going to shoot you, right? Fascism. But they've learned over the years that you start creating bottoms up movements coming, create heroes. So what they do is now, Ken and Tom, they are preemptively creating their false heroes, fake idols. And that's called the not so obvious establishment. This is a dynamic. So they have all the data because of the hard work that I started doing in 2020 because our movement that because I've studied this, we've trained now close, I mean, a half a billion people have seen my videos, unique people all over the world, about we have close to half a million people have gone through our Truth, Freedom, Health training. And we train people to tell them that the real devils are the Kennedys, are the Elon Musks, are the Tucker Carlsons, are the Donald Trumps, unfortunately, because these people are the wings of the left and the right. They blah, 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 lock her up. Well, he didn't lock anyone up. Right. Drain the swamp. You brought in the swamp. And then people like Kennedy. So they that's why they're pushing Trump and Kennedy so hard right now, because they know guys like me are educating people at a deep systems level of this. The swarm dynamic you shared, Ken, that little video went viral, even viral, even in the midst of all the shadow banning Musk does to my videos. It hit two million people. But I know it likely probably would have gotten to 20, 30 million. So the dynamic here, Ken and Tom is to manipulate people proactively to create these false idols and to suck use those idols to sucker people back, what I call sheeple people back into the establishment. That's why they're promoting Kennedy so much. Look at Joe Rogan in 2013 and 14 when I did the Monsanto research. In fact, many people wrote to Joe and they said, Joe, this is a serious scientist. He's published five papers, have him on your show. Joe Rogan took a pro Monsanto position, had the main uh, charlatan scientist out of Cornell on a show, gave a very one sided view when he could have had me on. He follows me, started following me, still follows me, knows I exist. And when this Kennedy thing is going on, he knows I'm the one who did the 2020 expose on Fauci first. He knows we're the ones who did all those videos, but he is controlled. He is controlled by Ari Emanuel. He's controlled by Endeavor. This guy is just a puppet. And if you notice, when he started becoming anti, quote unquote, against the vaccines, because he was going to lose his spot, of, he was going to lose his audience. OK, he wanted to bring a new audience. It was all marketing. So then he goes against the vax. Then he starts losing his Spotify audience. Then he makes some amends and then he goes back up. Watch this. You can just go look at it. It's pure money to follow the money. These people are brands. They are owned and operated by trillion dollar organizations. Joe Rogan is not some fighter for you. He's, he came out of the UFC nonsense where they fix fights at a WWE fake fights. Joe Rogan is part of that culture. Right. And right. You have you have a solution to all this, too. Yeah. Yeah. So so when we look at well, the first of the solutions, Ken and Tom, is when people go to truthfreedomhealth.com. What I've created is it took me years to do this because I used to teach a course at MIT teaching people system science. And the elites learn the science of systems, Ken and Tom. It's like you learn civil engineering, you learn aeronautical engineering. They learn how to basically manipulate people. And they learn the knowledge of system science. It's typically taught at the Kennedy School of Government, the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. And the science basically teaches system dynamics. And what I when I used to teach that, you know, I did my Fulbright on this. I realized that this science needs to be taught to every child, every person on the planet. 
because we're walking around with, you know, you know, slingshots and the elites have a nuclear weapon, which is a knowledge of system science. So one of the key solutions, Ken and Tom, is, you know, I've just put the link truthfreedomhealth.com. We started educating people on how to start understanding the nine principles of system science. And I can teach this to anyone, Ken and Tom. And what we do now is we have a hairdresser who teaches to people. We have PhDs. It's a learn, teach and serve model. So we now have close to half a million people who are understanding this, but you can apply it to your physical body to get your healthier. You can apply it to science. You can apply it to freedom fighting. And one of the things you learn is the elites have a very clear goal and they know how to send inputs into you, your brain, into the environment to manipulate you to get results. Their goals are power, profit, and control. I believe our goals are truth, freedom, health. And one of the ways they manipulate people is a not so obvious establishment. Robert Kennedy would be nothing if his name was Kennedy. He should actually be in jail for all the stuff that he did. Go, people should go look at his history. Joe Rogan would be no one unless he was appointed by the elites. So first solution we offer, Ken and Tom, is truth, freedom, health. And truth, freedom, health is actually a system. We teach people the engineering dynamics and we can train anyone. But without that knowledge, Ken and Tom, we're all screwed. We're going to think, oh, my God, because think about Have you noticed in a very recurrent process, they always create these fake idols in the 80s. It was Jesse Jackson. Remember him? They were trying to say, oh, he's fighting for us. And then it was Bernie Sanders and it was AOC. And now they have the left and the right have Trump. And Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton. Uh, yeah. Completely. Elon Musk. And he still has the portal. Open. Yeah. Elon Musk is still the portal open. But now because our movement exists and because I in many ways betrayed the billionaire class by doing what I do, they're all congealing together. And this and so literally an engineering exercise you have. Tucker Carlson, which is his right name. Remember what Tucker did, Ken and Tom, from the election side. He knew about the backdoor portal. I wrote to him in October uh, 30th, 2020. He didn't cover it. He waited two years to do a limited version of it as a CIA technique. It's called the limited hangout. Buried all of our stuff purposely. He did the same thing with election integrity. What did he do at Fox News? He never wanted to talk about it. He was internally, he was making fun of Trump and fun of the election integrity movement. And then when he realized, oh, there's a lot of MAGA viewers here I'm going to lose, then he starts talking about it. But he starts talking not about the real stuff, Ken and Tom, we know this. He didn't talk about the real guts of election. He talked about crap shit. But internally, he was texting saying, oh, this is all bullshit. The reality was Fox was indeed going to lose that lawsuit, which would have been malicious defamation because he maliciously knew that he was promoting in false stuff and he was internal. So Tucker Carlson now acts like he's a martyr. He's a bullshitter. He never was behind exposing the backdoor portal in 2020. He was never in ex exposing the real issues, of election systems integrity when it would have mattered. Yeah, so you, just had the, um, you just had the Alderman report released and uh, the uh, judge just unsealed that. And I think at least down in Georgia, that pretty much solidified the fact that these right, right. But, but he wasn't promoting any of this. Right. To your so point. He, he sat on it. He only did stuff to get viewers. And then when he got fired from Fox and I would have fired him, too, because he basically almost lost him one point five billion dollars. But then I, he, I, I'm puzzled by the fact that that all the room report is a pretty damaging defense and never did it come up or what what, what puzzles me is. Right. That they don't reach out to any of these "quote unquote" cybersecurity experts to actually defend the motion. Well, Tom, Ken, and Tom, we know, having been in the middle of this, you know, at that time it was a vaccine stuff we were fighting. I was exposed in the government backdoor portal, and I did all that work on signature verification, all that stuff. We didn't get paid a penny. Trump raised a half a billion dollars off of my work, Along and then he endorsed Jeff. Directors. Yeah, Jeff Deal in Massachusetts was involved in stealing my election. And then he ha has the audacity to thank Dr. Shiva, the great computer scientist who did this. And then he invited me to Mar-a-Lago. I refused. And then when he called me again, we went down. And in that meeting, I said, why did you endorse a scumbag? But he gets paid. Kerry Lake had to give him money to get his endorsement. Everyone has to give Trump money to get his endorsement. So Trump, the grifter, didn't care really about election systems integrity. And they made money off my work, money off many. And they then they promoted garbage election system stuff 
to create a fake, fake dialectic. And that's what's going on with this vaccine stuff. The real, there is no vax, anti-vax dialectic needed, but that is what Joe Rogan is doing. Elon Musk needs to sell more ads on Twitter. Follow the money. Okay, he just brought in a WEF whore to run Twitter. And I, when I was talking about this, no one wanted to, you know, all the conservative grifters are all like, Elon Musk is great. Elon Musk, where government ends and Elon Musk begins, Ken and Tom, nobody knows. Okay, SpaceX, 5.7 billion from government. Tesla, 1.5 billion in carbon tax credits. That's how they, they got their valuation to 600 billion. Twitter and government are like this, hand in glove. Because without Section 230 immunity, Twitter doesn't get their 10x valua valuation multiple on revenue. So you have Elon Musk, Joe Rogan. All, by the way, all these guys attack Big Pharma. They all are Big Pharma drug users too, okay? Including Kennedy. The level of contradictions is so deep that I have to unfortunately do this custodial job of exposing this. But Elon Musk, Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, Donald Trump, right? And now you have Robert fucking Kennedy Jr. This five elements of the pentagram are the front facing, not so obvious establishment that is being used to ensure in 2024, people get distracted from our movement for truth, freedom and health. And I say that without hyperbole because historically they have the obvious establishment and the not so obvious establishment. And this has occurred all over the planet. In India, when people were rising up in the 1900s to smash the British and have a good revolution, they brought in Gandhi. He was like the Kennedy of the day. And he basically manipulated the Indian masses, talked this nonviolent nonsense, made sure all the Indians were beaten up. The British quietly left India, transferred power to the Indian elites. Martin Luther King, same thing. Real leaders like Malcolm X, real civil rights leaders were uh, taken out early. OK, early, meaning they were made invisible and Martin Luther King was promoted by the Kennedys. And what ended up happening was affirmative action, which pitted blacks against whites. They never solved the real infrastructure issues that the inner cities needed. So this is his recurrent process. A real issue in the vaccine issues, is the 1962 Kennedy Vaccination Act must be abolished. And that's what I would do as president. First act. I think some of the things that you're saying if people are tuning in and watching you for the first time, they would say this guy's nuts, you know, because they haven't heard this type of, you know, approach, this type of um, perspectives. And, you know, I think, you know, people need to do their own research. They need to get a better understanding as to what's happening in the world. Um, Actually, Ken, most people get it because of the hard work we've been doing. If you see the very, very popular comments. What's happening, Ken and Tom, and we need to understand this, about a half a billion people are aware of our existence because during that 2020 period, Ken and Tom, the censors didn't know what the hell we were doing. So we explode. I mean, one of the videos I did got 100 million views on vitamin D3. People do know, Ken and Tom. That's why what you're seeing right now is an actual massive attempt to make my work, our movement's work invisible. But the cat's out of the bag. So we should get this accurate. People actually know about us. They know the legitimacy of it. Do you think enough people do? Oh, yeah. The thing is, they have to make it invisible, Tom. That's why they're so vehemently pushing Kennedy and Trump. And they're still this throttling the messaging from Yeah, but that's, so, so Kat, let me just give you an example, Tom. Remember, I was put back on Twitter on October uh, 28th, uh, sorry, December 2022. Remember, I was kicked off from February 2021 for two years. Kennedy was allowed on Twitter, which is the most important platform for politics. I, one of the most important influencers, the Stanford report said I was a top six super spreaders on the internet. My tweets had as much spread, and I can show you the report, as Trump's. I would do a tweet, it would get 40,000 retweets. And I didn't have the billionaire backing. So you got to understand our message hit, Ken and Tom, because I would do these tweets and I would do these long form videos. And that's why I became dangerous to the establishment because... Without their, me paying obeisance to them, I was getting out there. So I was out for two years. When I got back on December, 2022, I did a tweet back on Twitter and you can go look at it. And I said, hey, Elon, I was testing him. I'll be your CEO. How about that? I remember seeing that. And that went viral, 20 million views, Ken. 20 million views. 
And it must have gotten like 40, 50 major press hits. And you can go look at it. The next two days, I said, Elon, are you going to take down the backdoor portal? You claim you're a free speech absolutist. Clayton Morris, who is a former anchor at Fox, who runs his own organization called Redacted, caught Musk on one of those Twitter spaces where there's about 100,000 people on or more. And he said, hey, Elon, Dr. Shiva's lawsuit exposed the backdoor portal to Twitter. Are you going to remove it? You know what he said, Ken? I'm waiting. He said, oh, that sounds like Big Brother. Let me, I'll get back to you on that. Acted, played Mickey the dunce. Wow. He never came back. And then after that day, so if you look at my tweets, I've mapped it out on a spreadsheet. December, I did four tweets hammering Musk. Are you going to remove the backdoor portal? The next month, I did 10 tweets hammering Musk. And then you could see as I increase my critique of Musk, my views went down the other way. And you know what? They went from 500,000 impressions per day down to 5,000 impressions per day. Wow. So they know we exist and they know that I'm not a flunky, that I did not come from Malibu, and that I'm not a Kennedy. I don't do freaking drugs. I can't be bought. So the only so the modern technique, Ken and Tom, is to put people in a digital cage, do predictive analytics of all my followers and push them out contact to misdirect them to Kennedy. That's what's well, going on. People what I, what I think is important to point out too, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, all of these things that you're saying about other people, um, you've not been sued for for uh, defamation of character. No, they're all true. They're all true. In fact, I had to, let me give you, I had to sue Kennedy. When I exposed Kennedy in 2020, Ken and Tom, you know what happened? Every day I was exposing him. The freak, this is Kennedy classic smear campaign. He writes a blog post saying that I'm running a vaccine company, that I work with Bill Clinton, and that I'm friends with Bill Gates. Let me repeat that again to everyone. He's a fucking lying piece of shit. That's why I call him a POS. And everyone should understand that what about if he said to you, Ken and Tom, that you rape people in complete bullshit because I got to him. And then I sued him in federal court for $93 million. He kept evading service, running around, which is really hard to do. And then finally, when he got served, he defaulted. And my own attorney, as all attorneys do, he said, oh, he loves Kennedy and he didn't serve him properly. So I'm bringing up that lawsuit again. And I just filed back in federal court. Do you understand what a scumbag Kennedy is? He said, I'm a vaccine maker. That's defamation. Uh -huh. So I hope you guys wake the fuck up. And that's who the Kennedys are. So you have Rogan, who knows I exist, an MIT PhD, four degrees from MIT, won every award at MIT, an expert on the immune system, invited by the National Science Foundation to present. Why am I not being invited to debate? Is it because of my skin color? Yeah, I don't think is that's it. it. You, well, you I mean, I have, but I have to ask that question. Is it a yeah. white boy's club? Because you exactly. got one doofus who can barely talk Hotez and another doofus who sounds like the demon. So this is like out of WWE wrestling when I look at it. It's like, what are you trying to do? Vax versus anti-vax? No, the real issue is not vax versus anti-vax. The fundamental issue is that the immune system is a complex system. And I can explain it. I mean, my explanation of the immune system, Ken and Tom, in 2020 because I have that skill to take a complex stuff, explain it simply like you saw with my little drawings. That went viral. Husbands and wives who were fighting each other, the wife would play Dr. Shiva's video and the, and the husband would say, wow, I get it. I see the complexity of the immune system. I see why this has to be a decision between the doctor and the patient. We should not have vaccine mandates. I save millions of people's lives, Ken and Tom. I still get Every day, hundreds of emails. Thank you, Dr. Shiva, for telling me to take vitamin D3. Th thank you. You saved my wife's life in the ICU. I gave her the vitamin C drip. But guys like me will never get the Nobel Prize for any of this because we are exposing the swarm. And that's what Kennedy is. Robert effing Kennedy, I challenge him to debate me openly. I will take on Robert fucking Kennedy, Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, fucker Carlson, and Donald Trump all in one shot and let them have as many people as they want. They won't oh. do it because my sincerity, my integrity is rock solid. 
These guys say one thing and do another. And Kennedy's the epitome of that. You know, well, we, we'd like to help make that happen because I would got, love yeah. to see that. I mean, and to everyone yeah, out there, here's the real challenge. Does Joe Rogan, I title this thing, Why Joe Rogan Fears a Real Scientist. You know why Joe Rogan fe fears a real scientist? Because if he put me on his show, I'll put this in writing. He's going to lose half of his freaking audience because they would realize how they were being bamboozled by this prick who screwed them from the real deal. They will realize that what he's actually doing. Joe Rogan fears me because I'm the real deal. And I will expose that entire Hollywood shit he's involved in, that it's all about promoting narratives, push delaying truth. Why didn't he talk about GMOs in 2014 when it mattered? Why didn't he talk about the election integrity stuff? Why didn't he talk about vaccines with me in 2020 when we could have saved millions of people's lives? because these people are the swarm. Why did Kennedy not support the fire Fauci campaign? Why did Kennedy endorse Hillary Clinton? Why did Kennedy endorse his nephew as pro-vaccine mandates? How dare people be so fucking stupid to support this guy speaks from both sides of his mouth. You see in the Hindu or in the yogic science, there's something very interesting, Ken and Tom, about, you know what, you know, the body has chakras, energy centers. The throat chakra is a very, very important chakra. It's the fifth chakra. It is the chakra that connects your thoughts and your words with your deeds. When someone has throat chakra issues, it shows that they're a very malevolent person, that their words don't match their deeds. And that's Robert Kennedy. His voice, look, if you believe in God, the universe is telling people the guy fucking sounds like the devil. He says one thing and does another. And yet he's being promoted as a savior. Bullshit. People need to wake the fuck up. And Joe Rogan is scared shitless. Maybe he's scared of his height. You know, he did this to Owen Benjamin, a really good comic, who was the first to expose the, the trans stuff. And Joe Rogan has put an edict out saying no one can mention Owen Benjamin's name. Think about these people. They're sens censorious. Elon Musk has censored me. Scumbag. Guy does ma I have friends, who's, and Elon Musk can deny it. Massive drug pothead, not only pothead, fucking takes drugs all day. But these people can survive, Ken and Tom, because they don't have to work like I do. They can get away with it. They all bang the same people. They all hang out at Nobu. I know the restaurants they hang out at. They're one incestuous fuckfest. Excuse my language, but that's who these people are. Well, we can tell you're passionate about this. <laughs> yeah, that's being that's being very kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think the sure, reality we can, is the we American... Take a the American yeah. working people, the working class people in this country are the tip of the spear because they have the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. And the globalists know this. And the goal is to disarm, particularly the white working class. And that is why Donald Trump, if you believe elections are selections, then Trump was brought in also because they ran out the black guy, Obama, for eight years. And he confused 50 percent of Trumpers voted for Obama, Ken and Tom. Then they brought in Trump spoke all the right messaging points. Madison Avenue marketed, lock her up, drain the swamp. What did he actually do? He brought in the swamp. And then all these people were given the stupid Q movement to say, oh, he's gonna do something tomorrow. He's playing ninth dimensional chess. They delayed people from organizing bottoms up. That is a fundamental goal, Ken and Tom, to make sure people don't follow their own leaders bottoms up. And that was Trump's role. He kept Fauci. He supported Operation Warp Speed. He, he enabled the lockdowns. Him and Kennedy were one like this in March of 2020 with lockdowns. The goal is to subjugate. I'm being very, even though I'm not the white working class, but the American white working class is the tip of the spear because they're the only group that has the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. And so the reason Musk was brought in was to push himself as some free speech guy. And what has he done? He deballed all these conservative grifters. Oh, Musk is great. Musk is great. Well, he just brought in the horror from WEF. Come on. And then even scumbags like Dinesh D'Souza, the little rat squirrel, was defending her because he had to backtrack. This is where we're at. We don't have men who want to defend the American people. We have people who are drug addicts, people who are grifters, and we cannot lower our standards. We cannot do this anymore. 
The greatness of this country came from the First and Second Amendment. And people like us building a bottoms up movement, Ken and Tom, we have to stop bowing down to these scumbags. That's where we're at. Yeah, I, I we we have some uh, very similar problems up here in New Hampshire. So we've been we've been uh, at this for a while. You know, we have uh, our governor. You know, you mentioned WEF. I think his brother is a chairman on the finance part of the WEF. Um, you know, our election. Sununu, right? Sununu. Yeah. yeah. You know, we didn't have a free and fair election up here in 2020 either. We 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 had that SB 43 audit. Um, Ken partook in that. He was actually on a commission, um, but it didn't it didn't go anywhere. You know, you you you, um, you by design. Pulled, by design, I believe yeah. I believe that to be true. You know, I think prior post 2020, I wasn't involved, and uh, I kind of have become I've gone down that rabbit hole, red pilled, so to speak. Um, and I and I see it. I see it firsthand. I see the uh, the weaponization of government. I see the administrative state that we all live in, um, and it's a, it's just a very difficult to overcome thing. And well, well, actually, actually, Ken and Tom, we have the solution to overcome that, and the solution begins like in any other field. You have to have theory and practice. I'm just going to play a quick video so I can just get some water. And we'll come right back. Sure. I want to play you the video. I, I did an interview like this years ago, and it just it really represents. And I'll, I want to play two videos. I want to play this video, and then I want to end with our video everyone knows i'm running for president in the united states and uh it's a very important run because we don't owe anything to anyone ken and tom it's truly bottoms up you know we're going to get on the ballot in every state which no independent has ever done that itself will be a feat but i want to play you this video because it represents to you now we've i, I think i've done enough critiques the solution there is a clear solution no different than when we you know there was for thousands of years right people said you couldn't build an airplane right you couldn't fly only birds could fly We've been taught, oh, well, you know, there will always be the elites and the rest of us need to get screwed over. That's just the way it is, right? Well, I spent my whole life understanding why all these systems of power existed, traditional medical systems, you know, caste systems, and I cracked the code on it. You know, with my PhD work, my Fulbright work, I realized that once people understand system science, once we could marry that with what I call truth, freedom, and health and understand this dynamic, I could train anyone in about three hours and you build a community and a platform that we could literally have the framework to smash the or shatter the swarm. So let me just play that video for you guys. And um, I think you'll enjoy it. I don't think you guys have seen this. Let me play it here. We have allowed our country to be taken over from within. And the end goal is you will have a homogenized world where we will become slaves because there is a condition among the elites that really thinks they're better than you, deep down inside them, that you don't deserve the freedoms you have. They don't. This reality is what people need to wake up to, and we need to all unite working people. There's only one movement that can do that, and that is the movement that we started creating here in Massachusetts, the movement for truth, freedom, and health. Look, I've been a student of politics since I was a four-year-old kid, studying revolutionary movements, left wing, right wing. There is a physics, there is a nuclear science to destroying the establishment. To build a bridge, you need to understand Newton's equation. You need to understand the laws of gravity. You need to understand Poisson's ratio. There is a way to build a revolution. And that's why I put this together. My goal is to train a army of truth, freedom, and health leaders. We don't need followers like social media. We need leaders, but they need training because the educational system does not teach them history, nothing. So in three hours, that's what I've started doing. That's the solution. Wow. We got to train people first with understanding what a system is, the dynamics of all systems that affect nature. The second is understanding the interconnection between truth, freedom, and health. Freedom is the ability to move freely, communicate freely, talk freely. Without freedom, you cannot convert ideas ideas, hypothesis into truth, which is science. And without freedom, you can't really get to truth. And without truth, you make up fake problems and fake solutions, which means you destroy our health. And without health, which is the infrastructure of us and our body, you can't fight for freedom, truth, freedom, health. Third concept is it has to be bottoms up, working people, people who work uniting. And what the right wing has done is whenever you say working people unite, that must be communist. Meanwhile, they've let the Democrats run unions, which suppress workers, completely corrupt. But when you look at the arc of American history, it's been when working people came up. We need to go local. 
every solution I'm coming up with as a part of this movement, we're giving the science, which is the truth, and then we tell people what they can do on the ground. Like with election fraud, you don't need to wait for some lawyer. Our goal is to train people to go local, to go local, to go local, fight locally. Forget lawyers, forget politicians, forget celebrities. You've got to learn politics, and there is a science to it. They lock us down, we should be ready to shut them down. And the fourth part of this principle is a not so obvious establishment. So when you look at a system, there's always something that disturbs you from getting to your goal. Well, the biggest disturbance is a not so obvious establishment, which are those people who claim they're for you on the left and the right. The Al Sharptons who tell black people I'm for you. The Tucker Carlson's. Do you think any true anti-establishment person will ever be on Fox or CNN? I don't think so. They both mislead working people back into the establishment without this solid understanding of political physics and theory, you're screwed. You're gonna follow on the left wing, Bernie Sanders, oh, he said something, or Robert Kennedy, scumbags. Or you're gonna follow some right wing talk show host. They're not gonna lead us to liberation, it's us. We're building a bottoms up movement and that political physics, it's a nuclear science of change. Bottoms up. We have to organize to understand that there is people who talk a good game, and then look at what they actually do, left and right. I'm sorry, Sean Hannity may say some good things, but I don't see the urgency in his voice to get something done. And it can only come when you weaponize yourself with the right knowledge. You need to be able to identify a rat. You know, Christ didn't go after the Romans, right? It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees who screwed him up. His own quote unquote people. And that's where we're at. So these four concepts, I've built into a curriculum where people can go to truthfreedomhelp.com and it's an educational program. We need to train people in political theory. You need to have physics. And I've created that curriculum. People need to get educated. We need to get educated fast. And within a half an hour, an hour, I can teach people two years of MIT control systems. I teach people those concepts. Then I apply it. Anyone can understand it. And then you say, oh, I got to build a bottoms up movement. They have to get politically astute, and then they have to go locally and act, not sit there on social media. They have to act locally, defy locally, do civil obedience locally, but with knowledge on how to build a movement. And the Senate campaign's expanded to the movement for truth, freedom, and health, and they can find it on truthfreedomhealth.com so people can sign in, they can get access to a bunch of videos. If they want to take a course and become a truth, freedom, health leader, I offer a full scholarship there, but we want people to make a commitment that they'll study, that they'll get certified, that they'll go do activities on the ground. So go to truthfreedomhelp.com. It's one of the things that, that we do just to uh, and you guys should come to it every Thursday at 11 a.m. and at 8 p.m. It's typically two hours long. Um, uh, we do a orient open house. And the reason we were initially only doing it at 8 p.m. And, and then we were getting so many people from Europe and India and, you know, all these European countries that we ended up doing two sessions. So Thursday, that's why I said it's really blocked because we'll have people all over the world come in on, at 11 a.m. and at 8 p.m. But it's an orientation where people are going to come. They see that there's other people. People um, start recognizing they're not alone. So I recommend everyone, you can just go to vashiva.com slash orientation and do that. So the reason I wanted to play that for you guys is that we actually have a solution. And to me, it's it's the coalescing of theory as well as uh, coming. Now, uh, Ken, I just want to read. I don't know if you've seen some of the comments just to let you know that this is what they fear, Ken and Tom, that people are actually getting it. And that's why they actively have to make what we do invisible. That's why I really believe, guys, the future is, you know, offline. That's where the real future is. Um, unless you want to. Um, so let me read some of the. Uh, so. Um, so these are just different comments here. OK. So I just want to play, you know, there's a lot of people are getting this, okay? Um, so please read your comments. So we'll talk about that. You can run, the FEC has already ruled I can run. Um, okay. So there's a lot of people who are starting to get this, okay? 
So you have things like this, okay? Um, but what's really um, uh, what's really important is that people on the ground across all these issues are getting getting this, and um, and they're fine. You know, it's like they're not like you know you talk normally. It's not like you have to. You can be yourself, and the elites want to censor us in very very subtle ways. And so you can go through this. I think we have close to Jesus. I think about 600, 700 comments already, you know, um, and and I can keep going. But Ken and Tom, you know, in 2020, we used to have, you know, three million views on these videos. Easily. So there's been an active recognition that they have to control this and put it into a digital cage. So um, if you want, I can talk a little bit about Cytosol but before I move on. or I, I, I'd, I'd love for you to talk yeah. about Cytosol because I think that platform that you have is revolutionary. And I think people, our listeners, um, would love to hear about it. I, I found the conversation that we had the other day. Um, yeah, in fact, I have, I have a little right? video. Let me. I have a quick, quick video we can play on Cytosol. So, and I can talk about it. So Ken, Ken, what Ken and Tom are asking about is, Look, briefly, it is very, very rare um, that someone who actually is a practicing scientist, actually is an inventor, uh, actually runs a company, actually runs for political office, right? People, many of my friends think I'm insane. Like, Shiva, just do Cytosol, right? Why are you getting involved in this political muck? But to me, I can't separate truth, freedom, and health, Ken and Tom, right? They're integrated. But my journey was I was very, very interested in how my grandmother in this very small village in India was a, the village shaman. When you came to her with an ailment, she would look at your face. And now AI is doing this, right? They're saying they could predict political motivations by people's face or different diseases. But she would look at your face and say, oh, you had this imbalance. And then she would put together different herbs based on your particular imbalance. And I saw her empirically heal people. Um, so I was very curious how this woman with no degrees was able to do this. And there's an ancient system of Indian medicine called Siddha or Ayurveda, okay? Now, at the same time, Ken and Tom, I also saw this a deeply rooted caste system in India where we were considered the bottom of the bottom, right? Not the Kennedys, not people living in Mar-a-Lago, not in Malibu, but people of my caste, which is a particular job, were only supposed to pick coconuts for the rest of their lives. So it's quite extraordinary that my parents made it out of that draconian system. So I was also interested in politics. So when I came um, to the United States, I worked very hard. By the time I was 14, I had gone to NYU and I created the world's first email system. And this is not the Al Gore story and it's no joke. And I never publicized it until it went into the Smithsonian about 10 years ago. And, and, and it created a fabricated controversy when the fact is I created the first email system, which is inbox, outbox folders, the entire inner office mail system in electronic form, named it email, and got the first US copyright, was the only way to protect software inventions. I did it when I was 14. But I was working in a medical school when I did that because I was fascinated with medicine. And that was, if you remember 1970s, you guys may remember, a computer was not this little device, it was a massive mainframe, would fill you know two rooms up, massive, you know, a couple thousand square feet. And I was initially looking at why babies were dying in their sleep, Ken and Tom. So we had sleep data of babies. And the theory was when a baby would suddenly stop breathing, that was called an apnea. And if you could predict that, you could save a baby's life where you shake the baby, right? And that's what people do. So I did a lot of research looking at sleep patterns of babies. This is back in, again, 1978, what you would call the beginning of pattern recognition or AI. And based on certain sleep patterns, Knowing when the apnea took place, I created algorithms to predict that. In fact, presented a paper in one of the leading medical conferences when I was a teenager. Um, but while I was there is when I also learned how to build large-scale systems, right? Email, as we know it today. So when I came to MIT in 1981, I really wanted to do medicine. Um, but I was appalled at the fact that uh, Western medicine didn't look at the body as a system, Right. Um, you build a bridge, Tom, as a civil engineer, you look at it as the entire bridge, right? You don't just look at it as one rebar, right? You build a piece of software, you have to see the whole software. But medical doctors, frankly, aren't trained like this. 
They don't know the ankle bones connected to the foot bone. If someone has a lung issue, they go and do something to the lung and they may affect something in the eyes, right? They may do something in the kidneys, they may affect something in the ears, right? This concept of systems understanding didn't exist. So I ended up going in and out of MIT, uh, doing my uh, degree in electrical engineering, then started a company which we sold to Lotus, which did one of the first graphic programs, came back to the degree in design at the MIT uh, Department of Architecture, then did another master's degree in mechanical engineering. And then uh, while I was in the middle of my PhD, uh, 1993, I was developing some of the first, uh, what you call AI programs to analyze any kind of text. And I got three major US patents and I ended up getting invited to a contest the White House did to detect threats to the president automatically through email analysis. I ended up winning that contest left MIT in the middle of my PhD, and I started a company called Echo Mail for customer service. Anyway, fast forward to 2003, something wonderful was occurring in biology. The genome project had ended, and we realized that um, we, we have the same number of genes as a worm. We went into the genome project thinking we, we must have a million genes, knowing a worm had 25,000 genes in 1993. But when the genome project ends, turns out we have the same number of genes as a worm, we have 25,000 genes or 20,000 genes. So this was a major revolution in biology because the non-systems understanding of the body was to say, oh, um, more parts, more complexity, more genes, more complexity, right? So obviously if a worm had 20,000 genes, we must have a million. Well, we only have 20,000 genes. So what makes a human being complex is not the number of genes, but the molecular pathways. What are these pathways? Well, genes, if you remember basic biology, give rise to proteins. Proteins feedback on themselves turn, can turn on and turn off genes. These are called molecular mechanisms. So, so in 2003, this was only become nascent. So the theory was the National Science Foundation put out a big grand challenge was, hey, could you use the computer to mathematically model the entire human cell? all the molecular pathways. I mean, at the end of the day, we're a bunch of chemicals, right, reacting. And we have six trillion cells. And if you could model all those chemical reactions, A, you don't have to kill all these animals and do all this in vitro, in vivo studies to create drugs which cause side effects. So I said, wow, this could really change the world. I came back to MIT at the age of 40 while I was running this very successful company. We're worth around 250 million bucks because this was really my mission and to honor my grandmother. So I came back and I had to take all my PhD qualifiers over again, Ken and Tom. And my thesis was to create the first infrastructure to mathematically model the whole human cell. And that was cyto, cyto means cell and solve. And so I created Cytosol and it took me 16 years to validate it because this was revolutionary because I had to show that I had created something that could model the complexity of the human cell. So for six years, I had to publish papers and not some rinky dink journals, but the major journals in the world where all my peers in the establishment scientific community uh, acknowledge me. I use this technology because a gold standard is the FDA and big pharma, right? So in 2011, an article came out saying that if you're gonna solve cancer, you have to use combinations of drugs. And my thesis was cited in there, and I didn't pay off these guys to cite my thesis, it was in nature. And so I raised about a million bucks, making a couple of phone calls, and we used that million dollars to model pancreatic cancer on the computer. We went through all 270 drugs out there without killing animals, and I discovered a combination therapy, which was better than the chemotherapy, without killing animals, Ken, Tom. And I got it allowed by the FDA. In fact, the FDA called me, they said, you know, we've never seen anything like this. We normally don't make outbound calls, but you're the future of 23rd century medicine. So anyway, I didn't know what to do after I got it allowed, which is a big thing I did in 11 months, which normally used to take six years. We went to MD Anderson, we spun out a company with them and we're still in the middle of doing some really cool work with them on that. But the point here is this, Cytosol is revolutionary because we can literally model any disease. And since that time, over the last 12 years now, we've taken on 29 diseases and in honoring the natural products world, I have now discovered combinations of natural products from nature, which can go off, go and cure many of these diseases. So that's what I'm doing, Ken and Tom. And let me just play you a, a little video, which will really sort of summarize why Cytosol is not to tell you some of the things we're doing.
Who would have ever thought someone like me would invent email and create Cytosol to revolutionize health for personalized and precision medicine, a system for delivering the right medicine for the right person at the right time? I was born a low caste untouchable in India's caste system, a system of aristocracy, oppression, and racism. As a child, I observed my grandmother, a poor village farmer, practice Siddha, India's oldest system of medicine, to heal local villagers by observing their face, to know their unique constitution, to deliver a unique combination of foods, healing herbs and massage. The caste system and her abilities to heal inspired me to understand the interconnectedness of all life. My name is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. I'm an MIT PhD, a Fulbright scholar, a scientist, technologist, and inventor. My family and I left India to come to America on my seventh birthday. As a 14-year-old, I began working as a full-time research fellow at Rutgers Medical School to unravel the mysteries of sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, and created the world's first email system long before I ever heard of MIT. As I traverse academia over the next three decades, I observe self-serving academics, never solving real problems, writing grant after grant, competing for tenure while diminishing real science and real scientists, pushing a reductionist science to destroy the scientific method. Like the blind men who never saw the whole elephant but the parts, they delivered a dismembered view of reality. I observe Big Pharma use such reductionism, wasting billions year after year to fund research in test tubes, killing animals, and using the poor as guinea pigs for clinical testing to create products that even the FDA no longer allowed. Not only Big Pharma practice this reductionism, but also the elites of Big Vitamin, Big Green, and Big New Age, with gurus and yogis, empowered by Hollywood celebrities, selling one supplement after another based on a cherry-picked science. All that changed in 2003, when the Human Genome Project ended, revealing that humans have the same number of genes, about 20,000, as that of a worm, giving rise to a systems biology. We realized that one-size-fits-all medicine was a failure. We realized their medicines were killing us, making today's generation's lifespan shorter than any previous generation. Obesity, heart disease, deaths from adverse reaction to drugs, confusion on what diet, what supplements, and who to believe is what they have delivered you. They push natural and organic products for your beauty and wellness, while their real solution is their plastic surgeons and Botox. We've been sold out. It's time for real science, a system science that interconnects the parts to discover truth, to know what really works to get the health we need and deserve. This is why I created Cytosolve. Cytosolve is about truth, freedom, and health versus power, profit, and control. Cytosolve is a revolutionary technology integrating bioinformatics, computational biology, mathematical modeling, decentralization to reveal the truth. Cytosolve computes trillions of potential combinations of biomolecular interactions to discover what actually works based on the actual science. No reductionism, no cherry picking. Cytosolve's predictive modeling has been proven accurate time and time again, matching laboratory results. Cytosolve discovers synergistic combinations of compounds to maximize health and reduce toxicity. For example, we know curcumin from turmeric and resveratrol from red grapes alleviate inflammation. But how much should we combine? Current methods are hand-waving at best. Here, with Cytosolve, we first model the control condition with no curcumin and no resveratrol to simulate high inflammation with the cytokine level at 0.15 micromolar. Next, we add just 5 micromolars of curcumin. The inflammation drops to 0.05. Next, we use 5 micromolars of resveratrol and the inflammation drops from 0.15 to 0.06. But when we combine curcumin and resveratrol of 3 micromolars of curcumin and 2 micromolars of resveratrol, inflammation drops from 0.15 to 0.03. Far lower, nearly 200% less than just one compound alone. That's the synergy principle of system science. We've all had enough of their fake and reductionist science. They think we'll simply keep buying their marketing, their celebrities, and their products that can never truly heal us. We don't need them. Great things come when we integrate the best of things. It's our time. It's time we delivered solutions for ourselves. It's time for truth, freedom, and health. It's time for Cytosol. Welcome. Someone just put this up. Kennedy copies all of Dr. Shiva's talking points. Yep. That's what they do. They just steal other people's stuff all day long. But so Ken and Tom, so what's really cool with Cytosol is if you look at why food is medicine, the reality is food has many, many compounds, you say. So if you take a uh, turmeric, right, or if you eat an apple, it's not just the quercetin in the skin. It's many, many compounds. Now, the issue is finding out what's the right combination for you. So in traditional systems of medicine, Ken, my grandmother would look at you and she'd say, oh, Ken is this kind of body type. And they had a system for doing that. It was called Vatha, Pitta, and Kapha. And Tom, you would be considered a different body type. So 
let's say you both had some disease, God forbid, let's say you had disease X, your treatments would vary because each one of you are very different homeostasis and the deviation from that would be different. So it's quite fascinating. It's called precision and personalized medicine. In 2003, that's what the NIH decided, hey, we can't give one size fits all medicine. We have to figure out the right medicine for the right person at the right time. But that's what these traditional systems of medicine were doing, Ken and Tom. Now what Cytosol allows us to do, it allows us to reach that promise. And that's why when I look at something like vax and anti-vax, we have to, it's such a stupid thing. I mean, it's, it's like nonsense because the reality is when you look at the immune system, it, the immune system at a young age has to be activated. You say, just like your brain has to be activated. If you isolate a kid, he's unable to recognize stuff. You can't develop language, you say. So when the immune system, kids have to play outside and get the dirt, for example, it turns on the immune system genes. It's epigenetics. Um, very interesting research was done in F Finland in, and published in one of the leading journals of pediatrics where they showed uh, three family groups. One family um, had no dogs, no pets, right? Another family had dogs that just, uh, dogs and cats that stayed inside the house. Another family had dogs and uh, cats went in and out. And they looked at the children, you know, from the age of, you know, pre-pregnancy, right? To like five years old, 70% less reduction in ear infections in the family that had the dogs that went in and out, bringing in all that dirt and blah, 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 right? Etc. We're supposed to be exposed to stuff. It turns on the immune system. And so now we have a world where parents protect their kids so much, they don't let them play outside. And so God forbid, if you brought up a child and he's completely cloistered in the home, and now this kid goes out, he's gonna need artificial immunity because it's not the virus or the antigens that kill us, but it's your overreaction, right? The immune system, it's not a virus that kills us. And I'm one of the few guys who's actually trained people on this. It is the overreaction of your body's immune system. So when you look at it from that standpoint, it's not a vax, anti-vax argument. The issue is why aren't we providing natural immunity to our children? What is the solutions we're doing at that age? What are the exogenous chemicals we're hitting our kids with that is depleting their immune immunomodulation uh, mo capabilities, right? And several weeks ago, I shared in that swarm video, the work of Tyrone Hayes, where when you put certain chemicals, they disrupt the endocrine system. Two days later, Rob, Bob, Doofus Kennedy's literally barring my stuff and gets amplified by that another watermelon, as uh, Nassim Talib calls him, a Jordan Peterson, okay? This guy's a psychologist. I mean, these you have people who've never studied any of this suddenly as grifters jumping in. But the point is that when you look at it from a scientific perspective, does it affect everyone? No. It depends on your body's chemistry, right? So again, it comes down to one size fits all medicine versus the right medicine for the right person at the right time. And that's what Cytosol enables us to reveal, Ken. It lets us figure out what are those combinations? How do we combine things? How do we do the alchemy? to get synergy. And that's why food is medicine. So how can people take uh, advantage of that? So with Cytosol, what we've done is, um, you know, the first six years, it was validating and publishing it. The next uh, several years, you know, we uh, proved it commercially. And then what we're doing now is we're literally, uh, we have 29 diseases modeled. And now we're, it, it, this is this is not to push a product, but I've helped a lot of companies. So a lot of companies come to us, Ken and Tom, who are very forward thinking companies because they, a lot of these vitamin companies make stuff. They don't know if it works, but the smart ones are saying, hey, let me run this through Cytosol. So on the one hand, people who are actually trying to make stuff to work, they come to us and we help them figure out if it works or not. Some people are afraid to analyze their products because they've been just putting crap together. Two, three years ago, Ken, um, we modeled all the molecular pathways of pain and inflammation, and we found two very interesting ingredients from bitter orange and, uh, and uh, parsley. When you combine them, powerful effects. And I did my first product called MB25, which we put out there. We did a small batch. It sold out. We did another batch. People love it because people are finding it's incredible. They can get off Advil and these kind of stuff. So now we're going after, so on the one hand, we have two things. We help other companies who really are forward-thinking companies. And the others, we're actually starting to model these pathways and we're looking at all these compounds in nature 
and doing combinations. And obviously we can do it on the computer in relatively seconds versus spending, you know, hundreds of years. So we're doing both right now, Ken. That's great. That's great. How can I get myself a bottle of MV25? Uh, well, we just ran out. So just go go to mv25.life and you can get, I'll, I'll play a little ad for it. I didn't want to put that there. We will, but the thing is, this is again, getting back to the fact and look, um, even in the big pharma model, right? Um, the reason pharma was interested in cocktails is that what's happening with big pharma is if someone, God forbid, has cancer, what do they do? You go to the hospital and this is really fucked up, but this is what happens. Hospitals have inventory of chemotherapy agents and hospitals are actually having uh, now, what is it? Uh, uh, shortages of chemotherapy agents that they have to bring them in from China, even unapproved. There's a big article on this. But if God forbid one of your loved ones has some horrible cancer and they and they didn't do the right food and all that, and they get get the chemotherapy agent, typically what's happening is you're working along two curves. Is this agent going to have cure me, which is called efficacy, or is it going to kill me, which is called toxicity? Does that make sense? So you're yeah. you're you're trying to figure out how much of this medicine you should give that doesn't kill you. And how much do you give that's efficacious? So if you look on the battle of, of back of a bottle of Advil, or if you look at this bottle, we have calculated that you need so much, you know, apigenin and hesperidin. Well, how do they figure out that combination? Well, today it's a black art. Cytosol helps you figure out how much. So it's not if something's bad or good. And this is a very screwed up notion that the natural community has. It's how much. So what's turned out is if you give this much of a chemotherapy agent, and yes, it kills cancer cells, but it may also kill you. Then the goal is, but there may be multiple ways to attack cancer. So the strategy right now, Ken and Tom, is in cancer therapy. Can you give like five different chemotherapy agents, but at very low dosages? Like I showed you that turmeric and resveratrol. Hey, you, you, you're trying to dial it in. I, I had a son who had leukemia. So, yeah. so, yeah. so, so they, they, I would religiously watch his chart. So every blood chart. Yeah, we just, with cytosol, we just mapped out every molecular pathway of leukemia and we published it. We did the work of what would have taken Stanford and these uh, guys 20 years. We did it in two years. And it's a very major paper that's out there. So we're also accelerating academic medicine, Ken and Tom. So cytosol is revolutionary. Should I be doing cytosol all the time? Possibly. Should I be doing election systems integrity research all the time? Possibly. Uh, should I be doing... Uh, you know, fighting, uh, um, you know, exposing Robert Kennedy all the time and Joe Rogan, possibly. The thing is, all of them are interconnected to me, Ken and Tom, right? The fight for freedom is necessary if you want to be a real scientist to get to science. And without real science, we're never going to get to real health. And without health, if we're unhealthy, we can't fight for truth and freedom. So so to Ken and Tom, to sort of close this out, and we, we can follow up on our podcast with you guys, is that truth, freedom, and health, they're highly integrated, you know? System science teaches us that when we achieve our goal, there's a disturbance. And I think closing the loop on this conversation, people like Rogan are fearful of people like me, fearful of guys like you when we expose the real truth and they will make us invisible. You guys told me that, you know, your, your stuff doesn't get the reach it deserves, right? Because they, the real stuff will never get out through their channels. Sure. And the only reason my stuff gets out right now is because we have an army of people getting it out through lots and lots of channels. And we tell people, if you're watching this podcast or this stuff, go, you know, click on the notify, go subscribe. I never used to do that, but comment on it, you know, retweet it, reshare it. But we have to build a bottoms up army. And, and I really believe, Ken and Tom, the future is offline. The future is offline. It's not online. Yeah, it's all control. I agree with it. Yep. I agree with that. Uh, hence why we um, we created the government integrity project. And yeah. That's why we, we we're, we're this is going to be our second podcast, but we're going to do a lot. So more we're gonna we're gonna do a, a formal thing when you guys have your sound stage set up, right? This week, yeah. next week. Okay. Yep. And we'll yep. focus on this, and I assume all the election stuff also. Absolutely, I'd like, love to continue the conversation. It's great. This has been great. Thank Ken, anything much. else that I, no. you? I know. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you guys for, you know, just jumping in. I know we, we were here, so we did it, but I think our audience appreciated your guys' questions right. um, and comments. I will just end, and if you guys can just hold, I'm just going to play our, uh, I don't know if you guys saw our campaign video, Ken and Tom. This is sort of the video that we just did for our campaign.
And it sort of summarizes everything that we just talked about. So here you go, and I'll come right back. Who would have ever thought I'd be running for president of the United States of America? I was born a low caste untouchable in India's caste system, a system of aristocracy, oppression, and racism. My name is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. I'm an MIT PhD, a Fulbright scholar, a scientist, engineer, entrepreneur, and inventor. My family and I left India to come to America on my seventh birthday. I grew up in the working class neighborhoods of New Jersey, playing baseball, mowing lawns, painting houses, and coding software. My friends and neighbors are blacks, Italians, Irish, people of all races. As a 14 year old, I wrote 50,000 lines of software code to create the world's first email system and was awarded the first US copyright for email, recognizing me as its official inventor at a time when copyright was the only way to protect software inventions. I did that long before I ever came to MIT, revealing that big innovations can occur anytime, any place by anybody. Growing up, I saw politicians dividing us by race and religion in both America and India to have us fighting each other while they remained safe in their gated communities and in their playgrounds of Hollywood, Martha's Vineyard, and Silicon Valley. I'm a fighter. I fought racism and exposed their imperialist wars, fought for workers, and put my life on the line against global corruption. I never wanted to run for political office. All that changed when I saw working Americans as never before being duped by the establishment and the not so obvious establishment across left and right. We were being sold out and made to forget why we came to America and why America existed. Lawyers, academics, billionaires, celebrities and politicians, elites, Clintons, Kennedys, Bidens, Obamas, Bushes, black and white have hijacked America. They printed trillions for their friends. They delivered crumbling infrastructure, corruption and racism. They've transferred trillions to themselves, dividing black and white, fear-mongering and fake science, lockdowns and censorship, dirty air, food and water, pushing drugs upon us, making us sicker. We've been sold out, one set of rules for them and another for us. We deserve a warrior with a history of courage in putting everything on the line for you, who believes in you, not them, who has created a movement bottoms up for truth, freedom, health. I've exposed their lies at the right time never waiting until it was popular. I've exposed their false gods who exist to lead you back to them. I've exposed their fake science of lockdowns and masking and provided you solutions to fight them and win and protect your immune system, saving millions. I exposed Fauci, galvanize the fire Fauci campaign when others remain silent. When they stole our election, we sued the government and Twitter in our historic 2020 federal lawsuit, exposing in bare view the government and big tech censorship infrastructure the unholy alliance between government and social media companies. Where was Elon and his grifters? They stood by the sidelines and did nothing. They did not use their megaphones to help us when it could have made a big difference. Now our movement grows for truth, freedom, health, independent of all of them. Every day millions are learning the science of systems, the knowledge the elites do not want you to have, so you may learn how to think, stand up, and fight, independent of the establishment of left and right and their fake heroes. Now it's time for you to join the movement to win back America, to win back truth, win back freedom, win back your health. That's why I'm running for president of the United States. This race is about you. This race is about truth, freedom, health versus power, profit, control. We've had enough. They think we'll fall in line and vote again for their lawyers, celebrities, billionaires, and chosen ones from above. We choose our heroes from below, from the rank and file who do what is right at the right time, not when it's convenient and popular. They can never represent us. What America needs is a movement by the working people, for the working people, who are educated, organized, decentralized, and fight for independence from their systems of control. And that movement exists. It's ready for you. We don't need them. We need us to go bottoms up, neighbor to neighbor. My journey, your journey, are all the same. It's our time. It's time we had one of us. It's time to win back truth, freedom, health to win back America, be part of this historic movement, all the way to our victory on November 5th, 2024. If you're an American citizen, pledge your vote now for Dr. Shivaya Duray, the independent candidate for U.S. President. No matter where you live, you can be a part of this. Volunteer as little as 20 minutes a day. Don't delay. This is Dr. Shivaya Duray, and I approve this message, paid for by Dr. Shiva for President. All right, Ken and Tom, by the way, that's all produced internally here, you know? That's very nice. No sure. consultants, nothing, you know? Anyway, guys, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to just say goodbye Good. to everyone, uh, and I'll be right back. With, let me just sign off here. Everyone, thank you very much. Um, 
Uh, keep an eye out for a drop we're going to do today to follow up to the swarm video. I think you guys are going to uh, appreciate it. It literally is going to show systemically how specific policies affect molecular pathways of aging and how those in power, the swarm, actually literally kills people. Um, and it's going to make it very, very uh, accessible to people to understand that policies affect biology. Thank you, everyone. Be well. <laughs>